What's up guys, Silver here with another Halo Infinite Achievement Guide. This time we're doing part one of our Halo Infinite Lasso Run. This will be Warship Jabraken, and you know we like to start these off with an overview of the skulls that we'll be dealing with. So the first one on the list is Black Eye. This means your shields will recharge only when you melee enemies. So this skull works a little differently across all the Halo titles, but in Infinite you simply need to melee an enemy and your shield will start recharging at its normal rate. That means if you melee an enemy and then immediately get shot again, your shield will stop recharging, so you'll want to try to melee an enemy and then quickly get to safety. A little nuance unique to Infinite is there are now electric type weapons, so if you get damaged to the point where even after taking cover and not getting shot, you're continuing to take damage because the electricity is still kind of coursing through your body and still needs to dissipate. If you melee an enemy before it dissipates, it won't do anything for you, so you'll want to wait until after the electricity has totally left your body, left your uh, player character, and then you could actually melee somebody to get shield back at that point. The next skull is Catch, and this one means that enemies will throw and drop more grenades. So the dropping of grenades component of this skull is completely irrelevant due to the bandana skull, because that one will give us infinite grenades, so we'll talk about that one a little bit later. Fog is up next, and this is another one that's completely irrelevant due to the blind skull this time, not the bandana skull. This one disables the motion tracker, but the blind skull disables all of your heads-up display elements, so this one's kind of irrelevant. Famine, another completely irrelevant skull in this lasso campaign due to the bandana skull yet again. This one makes it so that weapons that are dropped by enemies have half the ammo they typically would, and this is usually pretty challenging, but since the bandana skull is active in this, uh, the bandana skull will give us infinite ammo, rendering the famine skull totally pointless. Thunderstorm is up next, and this one upgrades the rank of most enemies. This one has always made the game more challenging, but it's especially noticeable in this game because grunts have shields now. Most elites are now ultras, which are the ones with white armor that have heat waves to start. And then once they take enough damage, they draw their swords and turn invisible and attack you. And for those of you who couldn't get enough rocket flood in the earlier games, the flood aren't back, at least at this point. But a large amount of brutes and skimmers are now packing rockets, so we got rocket brutes and rocket skimmers. Next up is Mythic, which is easy enough. Enemies have increased health. Next up is Blind, another really annoying one to deal with. The heads-up display and weapon do not display on screen, so it's tough to tell what weapon you have out, along with what grenades you have equipped, what armor ability you have equipped, how much shield you have, and of course the lack of targeting reticle. This is actually a little easier to deal with than in other Halo games because although the reticle is removed for your targeting, there's a little indicator within your reticle that shows whether you're in grapple range or not of whatever you're looking at. So that will actually remain. So if you have the grapple shot equipped, you'll still get that little indicator, which is right inside your targeting reticle. So you can kind of use that as a makeshift targeting reticle. Obviously, you need to be looking at something that's within range of your grapple shot with the grapple shot equipped. So it won't work in every situation, but for those situations, you can always place a makeshift reticle on your screen, whether that's through software. A lot of uh, gaming monitors nowadays have features where you could put a reticle on your screen. So you can just head into a custom multiplayer game before hopping into Lasso. And I recommend grabbing a sniper rifle because it is the smallest reticle. And then you can just kind of place your makeshift reticle over that. So you can do that with your gaming monitor probably. If you don't have a monitor that has that feature, you can always do it the old-fashioned way, which is put a small square piece of see-through tape right over the reticle. So you can trace the reticle onto the tape with a marker. I typically use a small square piece of magic tape. In previous lasso guides, I've called it scotch tape, but apparently that's the brand. So scotch magic tape is what I've been using, and I traced it onto that tape with a sharpie. So be careful you don't use, you know, some crazy heavy-duty tape that's going to leave, uh, you know, some residue on your screen, and make sure that uh, you don't accidentally mark up your screen with whatever marker you're using. I haven't used a makeshift reticle in a few years now, I just play with blind on as intended, but for those who aren't as comfortable, those are a couple solutions for you. But anyway, on to boom, this one doubles the radius of any explosion, so pretty straightforward. Your rockets, your grenades, anything else, fusion cores will have more of a blast radius to deal with, so steer clear of those. Cowbell acceleration from explosions is increased, so those chain reactions will occur faster. Grunt birthday party, grunt headshots lead to glorious celebrations, so this one doesn't make the game any more difficult or easy. Just adding to the fun factor here, and speaking of fun, I Would Have Been Your Daddy is the next one, and this one makes rare combat dialogue more common. So usually it's some more humorous dialogue comes to the forefront, so you'll hear that more often. And finally, Bandana, the game-breaking skull that makes Infinite's version of Campaign, of Lasso rather, way too easy in my opinion. Along with the tank gun, of course, but we'll get to that later. Obviously, Lasso stands for Legendary All Skulls On, but in the past, beneficial skulls like Unlimited Ammo, Ability to Fly... All guns that you use being scarab guns, etc., those typically wouldn't be included in a lasso playthrough for the most part, and you'd just be left with the ones that make the game more difficult, really making lasso, you know, a big challenge. But anyway, I digress. This skull grants you unlimited ammo, 
unlimited grenades, both of which I hinted at earlier, but the other big component of bandana in infinite that is not immediately obvious is the fact that it affects your equipment as well, so it entirely removes the cooldown period for your grapple shot, threat sensor, drop wall, and thruster, so you can just basically spam all those to your heart's content as much as you want, and that's really going to make maneuvering around the map and getting past enemies that you otherwise would have to fight a lot more easy. But that's it for the skull overview, let's hop into Warship Jabraken and get started. Right off the bat, there's going to be a notification that pops up before you can move, so just kind of X out of that. That's just showing you the feature within the game where you could scan kind of the area and objects of interest will pop up. So that's useful, and we will use it throughout the campaign. But I'm interested in this box. So this crane will go over and pick up this box, and this box has a battle rifle in it. So that is why I'm concerned with it. So a lot of times uh, it will be picked up already. You can't get to it in time before it gets picked up, and it's kind of tough to get up and in there while it's being moved. So you can just wait for it to get dropped off over here and then you could freely jump into the box once it's on the ground and you can see I ping that scan function and I'm highlighting the BR which is nestled in there so hop in uh, exchange one of your weapons for it It doesn't matter which we're gonna exchange both of our weapons so uh, I have a BR now and an assault rifle but I'm quickly gonna change out my assault rifle for a plasma pistol so we're gonna go over here now and there's going to be a weapon rack ignore that uh, grapple shot notification saying hey you got a grapple shot we know. We know all about it. We're on lasso here. But go in this direction and wrap around, and you'll find that there's a weapon rack with a plasma pistol on it in the middle. So grab that. We now have a battle rifle and a plasma pistol, so we're going to noob combo all these grunts. Most of them have energy shielding now, so we're going to treat them just like we did all the elites and brutes in previous Halo titles where we just noob comboed all of them, which, if you don't know, means you're going to overcharge plasma pistol them, which collapses their shield, and then you're going to finish them off with a headshot from your battle rifle. So it makes quick work of these guys. And uh, we're going to go back down here where we could safely hide behind this pillar. Take those two guys out and we'll go up and find the third one up here. So we want to take this guy out as quickly as possible. Uh, we don't want to go too close to that door because that door opens up and then notifies all the enemies in there that we are here and they activate their shielding. Because to start, they don't actually have an energy shield activated. So you can kind of pick off a couple before they activate that and then you'll have to noob combo the rest of them. So we're going to take these guys out slowly and surely, just kind of inch your way down the ramp and work around the room. A couple more grunts come in as reinforcements through that door, and then we'll be able to move on to the next section. There are three additional grunts on the opposite side of the room that we entered this room from, so you can deal with those guys. You do probably want to smack a grunt or two uh, before you leave. So you could have a full energy shield, so you could ensure you have a full shield. Because you don't actually get checkpoints if you have any uh, shield missing. So you want to make sure as you're moving throughout the campaign that you could, uh, you know, get your shield up as you move from section to section. So these three guys over here can be ignored, but if you need shield, you could kill two via noob combo and then collapse the shield of the third and quickly grapple towards him and melee him to death. So now we know for sure we have full shield and we'll get a checkpoint as we move to the next part of the mission. Before moving to the next section, we want to make sure we have spike grenades out and our plasma pistol is the weapon we have out. So that's why I was kind of shooting that gun there and also throwing the grenade just to verify what I had out. And now I'm going to move to this door and there's going to be a brute that charges our position. We're going to collapse his shield with an overcharged plasma pistol and then just stick him a couple times really quick with spike grenades as we back up. And then that will take care of him easily enough and we'll move forward to the next section. You could use your grapple shot to kind of uh, move through more quickly if you'd like. And there's going to be five grunts in this room all with no shield at first because they obviously don't have it active right when the beginning of the encounter occurs. They uh, they kind of just activate it only when there's danger or they're aware of danger. So you could pick off a few of them before they actually even activate their shield. So otherwise, just noob combo them once they do activate their shields. I was actually able to kill all five of them at one point in one playthrough, but usually there's a few that activate their shields before you could do that. Next, we'll head into this room, and there's three brutes with commandos, and we're just going to not deal with these guys at all. So we're just going to turn around as soon as you get into that room, turn around and go back the way we came towards the beginning of the mission, and we're going to despawn their AI. So what we're going to do is go down this hallway. This is the room where the brute was charging us, and we plasma pistoled him and then stuck him with spike grenades. And we're going to go into this room, and uh, we will just kind of run to the end of this table here, and then we'll go back towards those brutes. And now at this point, their AI will be despawned. So I'm just speeding this part up. We're just running back towards the uh, next part of the mission here, and you can see that these three brutes now are just standing here, not doing anything. So you can melee them to get your shield back, but they won't do anything. It seems like they're about to start fighting you when you melee them. They get angry, and they move a little bit, but then they just start uh, standing still again. So you could just use those guys for shield if you ever need it. Just go back and smack those guys, and then we're going to grapple over here. There's four jackals on the other side over here, so just kind of hang out where I am right now on this uh, platform, and you can just kind of BR these guys 
from afar. And uh, sometimes they like to hide behind those boxes so you could throw some frag grenades to try to get them to move around. Or you could even just nade them off the map, which works as well. And there's going to be two brutes that come down the elevator on the right. One has a shield and rockets. One has no shield and a commando. So we actually want to focus on the one with the commando at first if we can. But this time around, only the rocket guy is presenting himself to me. So we're just going to simply plasma pistol him. Not with an overcharged plasma pistol, but just with a kind of regular shot from the plasma pistol. Spritz him from afar, and then his shield will pop. You can easily sidestep the rockets when he fires them. He always just fires them straight at you, so you can just move to the left or right. Once a shield is popped, we'll just headshot him with the battle rifle to knock his helmet off and then take him out with a headshot. This other guy is actually the more dangerous one, so if he is available to shoot and kill first, do that. But he was hiding the whole time. Um, but since he has a commando, he could just headshot you from across the map once he pops your shield. So he's actually the more dangerous one since you can't sidestep his bullets like you can with the rockets. But watch out for any fusion cores you may have blown up. You can see there's some residual damage on the floor there that I just kind of walked over. Ill-advised. But we're going to activate this uh, elevator. Make sure you don't accidentally pick up that mauler. It's not always there, but obviously uh, you could accidentally pick up weapons as you go through the game. But we're going to skip ahead here, get to the top of the lift, and we're going to turn to the left, and we want to take out the jackal, and then we can focus on noob comboing the grunts. So the jackals, you can just shoot them in their little notch. It kind of shoots them in the hand, and that gets them to expose their head, and then you can easily headshot them before they move their shield back into position. Now we're just going to hide behind this box and deal with these five grunts via noob combo like we've been doing. So this is pretty uh, standard at this point. Make sure you're hiding behind this crate more often than not. You don't want to just be standing out in the open uh, taking bullets while you're switching weapons. So you can see every time I switch my weapon, I'm basically going behind the crate to do so because that is time spent out in the open where I'm not returning fire or anything. So it's kind of pointless to be out there uh, and vulnerable. So whenever I go uh, back here, I'm switching my weapon. And also I'm building up my charge and my plasma pistol before moving out and using it. So I'm not just kind of wasting time out in the open charging up my plasma pistol. I do that behind the crate and then I could just kind of quickly move out shoot it at the enemy, and then duck behind the crate again, switch to my BR, pop out again, shoot him in the head. So that really limits the amount of damage I'm taking. So for the last grunt, we will collapse his shield and then move in and melee him to death so we ensure we have full shield for this next section and we could get a checkpoint, hopefully. Be aware that as you're fighting these guys, they might throw a grenade, so you might want to move from that crate back behind these crates and then back behind here even so you have a couple places to retreat to if they kind of push your position and throw a nade or two. Instead of going all the way down the hallway here, we're going to turn and take the first door on our left Go through the first set of doors, but not the second set of doors. We're going to stay here, and we're going to take out the brute on the far side of the room. He's just standing there at the beginning. And then we're going to turn to the right. There's another brute's head popping up over the desk over here. And then we're going to wait for the brute to move up from the center of the room, kind of in the lower area. He moves up the ramp to the higher area on the far side of the room, and you can take him out easily with a BR as well. And we're going to continue staying in this area in between the first set of doors and the second set of doors. You don't want to move in there because the rocket guy on the far side, there's one brute remaining with rockets. And he actually does not shoot at you if you stay in this area. So stay in between the first and second set of doors here. And you could easily just pepper him with the plasma pistol as he presents himself. And then you could headshot him once his shield collapses and finish him off. In addition to the brutes here, there are three grunts with shields. So we're just going to noob combo them as they present themselves. And the grunts are actually your main concern at this point. So once you take out the three brutes that we took out initially right off the bat, the grunts are your main concern because as mentioned, the rocket brute, the lone remaining brute with rockets does not actually shoot at you if you're standing where I was. So the grunts on the other hand will shoot at you. So they're the next biggest threat, but the grunts were hiding initially. So I took out the rocket guy and then focused on the grunts once the grunts started popping out. So typically you'd walk down this area and go to the next part of the mission, but we're going to skip that whole bridge section and just kind of trigger the escape sequence. So this door on the right, is what you want to go towards and we're just going to smack it a few times and once you smack it enough the door will open up and you'll see this it's not really loaded in yet but just walk in and then the graphics will load in and we want to get rid of this fusion core so i threw it back the way we came you could throw it forward you could throw a nade at it or shoot it to blow it up whatever you want to do just make sure you're a safe distance away so you don't take any damage and we're going to take a left once we get through here and there's another large fusion core on the left side towards the end of this section and we want to blow this up so i'm going to throw a nade down here and this will make it a lot more safe once we make our way uh, through here again. So we loaded in the geometry of the escape area here, but we didn't load the full encounter yet. So we're basically just going back towards the beginning of the escape section. And uh, basically we'll be able to trigger it to fully load at that point. As you can see, it's very dark in this section, but you'll know you've gone far enough and hit the trigger to start this escape sequence once the lights come on in this room. So you can see I inch my way forward, the lights came on, I'm going to turn around now and go back the way I came. These two grunts spawn in with no AI, so you could smack them to get shield back. 
We'll continue going back the way we came, and you can see up ahead here there's now enemies in this area along with the correct lighting and the explosion. So that explosion that just occurred would typically have blown up that giant fusion core that we blew up uh, beforehand. So we kind of just made this whole area safer. Typically that would blow up a lot of boxes, and they would go flying around in all different directions and possibly splatter us, but since uh, we kind of took it out beforehand, we didn't have to worry about all those boxes flying everywhere. So we took out the brute with some headshots. We'll noob combo a couple grunts here. This explosion doesn't really do anything too dangerous. It just kind of shifts the boxes instead of catapulting them at a million miles an hour. Then we'll take out these brutes from downrange as far as you can with our battle rifle. We don't have to worry about ammo, obviously, due to the bandana skull. So we'll just take them out. Be aware they do have commandos, though, so they are pretty dangerous. So kind of use as much cover as possible. But don't go sprinting downrange just yet. There's one more brute, and he's actually closer to us than those two ones we just took out. And he often likes to hide on the left, so I'm just going to move around and just make it so that I could barely see over the top of whatever I'm hiding behind so I could see his head. Because if you've watched my previous lasso guides for previous Halos, you'll know that enemies like to shoot you in the chest. So if you have your chest covered, they won't be able to shoot you for the most part while you could actually shoot them in the head. So it's a little advantage you could use. And that's also why I'm rapidly crouching up and down so I could keep the average location of my chest below the cover in front of me. Meanwhile, I could shoot over the cover and just take him out with headshots. If you want to be super safe, you could take out those grunts from far away too, but I'm just going to sneak up on the right side, and then I'm going to cut into the right because the door we actually have to go through is right here, so we don't even have to go as far as those grunts are. That explosion on the right is typically more dangerous, but since we moved that fusion core preemptively, we don't have to worry about that. We're going to grapple across the room here because there's a bunch of deadly goo now that will actually damage you if you step into it, so watch out for that. And we're just going to take out these grunts, via smacking them so we know we have a full shield heading down here. We'll drop down the elevator shaft, and the elevator is not in service anymore, but it actually, thankfully, collapses and just falls down to where we need it to go. And we'll move up here. That will cause an explosion. The boxes will shift around, and then we could actually move down here safely. And then we'll move through here and go to the left, and there's a bunch of explosions and nonsense happening in here. All these deployable buildings are basically blowing up and falling down out of the ship here. And this part of the mission was kind of designed so that you would go into these buildings and follow this long winding path where they all are collapsing and falling down. And it was this intense moment, but you could actually avoid all of that by instead of going into that uh, building there, you just drop down to the left here. And there's a bunch of buildings down here that you could just run along the top of so we could avoid all that nonsense. It's a lot faster, it's a lot easier, you don't have to uh, worry about getting knocked off so much because these guys are not moving at all down here. So you might have to grapple still a little bit to uh, jump the gaps but it's easy enough, and we'll just go straight to the end here. So there's going to be some enemies kind of just standing on top of these, so you could use them to smack to get shields if you need to. Once you drop down to this pair of buildings, you want to go towards the left and hide over here to avoid getting shot at, and inch your way forward to trigger that elevator to fall down. That will cause a big explosion, and all the enemies on top are now dead, but there's still three grunts down below that are alive. So we're going to hop over to this other uh, building of this pair, and we're going to hide as best we can, and just take out these grunts from far away. I'm not even going to deal with the plasma pistol at this point. I'm just going to lay into them with the BR. You could actually tear through the shield of a grunt and kill them without having to reload. So I took out the grunt on the left entirely with my BR. And then you could see the two grunts on the right were near that fusion coil. So I just blew up the fusion coil and killed them that way. Uh, if you don't kill them with that, you could always just BR those guys as well. We're going to move forward and that spawns in one final brute. He's got a commando, so you want to make sure that you're hiding behind this cover here. Fortunately, this piece of geometry in front of us is slanted, so we could use that to our advantage. We want to make sure that we could see his head, but we can't see his gun. That means he can't shoot us, but we could shoot him, because like I mentioned, he's going to try to shoot us in the chest rather than the head, because he's straight up dumb. Two more grunts is all that remains here, and you could take him out from far away if you want to be extra cautious. They did end up taking down my shield, but fortunately the ship blowing up took him out. And you don't need to worry about ending this particular mission with a shield. Some missions won't give you a fresh shield at the start, but this next one does, so we'll spawn into Foundation with a full shield and get a checkpoint. So you could try to just run past them, you could just be safe and kill both of them, however you want to tackle it. But that is the end of this mission. We'll get a few cutscenes before heading into the next mission, Foundation, so I will see you guys for that one. Thanks for watching guys, if you found that video helpful, be sure to click on the scorpion icon to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. You can also check out some related guides by clicking on the videos on screen, and you can find links in the description for other social media links of mine. Stay tuned for more Halo guides, and I'll see you in the next one.